for what I'm sure were very kind words of welcome. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here, and um, I hope you all enjoy what I have to say. Um, how I thought I'd do this um, is that I'd tell you a little bit about our organisation and what we do, um, and uh, in doing so, then looking at what we're buying as a collecting organisation, you'll get a, a uh, quite a good sense of what's happening in Australian art. Um, it will be very much the primary market because that's where we um, operate. But um, we do buy very broadly, so you'll get a sense of possibly what's happening across a whole range of emerging and contemporary art in Australia. Um, now, the first thing is, what are we? Well, we're a part of the government, um, is the first thing I probably want to say. Um, we're, we were set up as an art support organisation. And when I say art support, it's about supporting artists in their practice and also supporting art generally and making sure that people are more exposed to and can learn more about contemporary art. Um, we have a charter that's fairly straightforward. The first part is to encourage contemporary Australian artists by buying their work. So um, that's our main role um, in terms of art support, is to buy work. And in that sense, we're building, we have built quite a large collection of contemporary artwork. The second prong of our charter really is to um, stimulate a wider appreciation of contemporary art in the community by making this work available for display in public places by renting it. So what we are really is an art support body with cultural goals, but we operate very much as a business, an art rental business. So people come to us, whether they're government or corporations or, sorry, government or corporations or uh, private individuals even, and they rent work from us for a period of time. And we use that money to buy more contemporary art. So we operate this rental scheme both to private and public sector, and parallel with that, we manage this very large collection on behalf of the government. So we're, we're kind of part museum collection, and we operate a little bit like a museum in some ways, but we're also a business. So um, we're, um, we're a fascinating hybrid, really. Um, I think the most interesting thing about us is that we're entirely self-funding. That means we get, even though we're part of government, we get absolutely no money from the government. So the government, we're not subject to budget cuts. Um, we're not subject to... Um, strictures in what we buy, we're very, very independent of the way we operate. So that gives us a great deal of freedom to um, basically um, buy what we like to buy and um, support the artists we want to support. So overall, I suppose, the aim is to encourage excellence in contemporary Australian visual arts and to foster the appreciation and development of living Australian culture through visual art. So we acquire art and we promote art. And we've been very successful at doing both of those. Um, I am started just with a couple of slides to give you a sense of our offices in Melbourne. This is our, the racks. This is our showroom. Um, there's currently over 10,000 works in the collection um, by, I think, between three and 3,500 Australian artists. So it's a very big collection now. Um, and we have a large storage facility in, in um, Sydney. Um, and these are some views of that. Um, I'll give a little bit of our history. We started in 1980... Um, by Prime Minister Fraser, who was a Conservative Prime Minister, but uh, he, one of his ministers went to Canada and saw that there was a Canadian art bank and thought what a good idea it was and came back and, and convinced the government to set one up in Australia. Um, the, so the model really came from Canada, but in a sense has been a bit more successful in Australia over time because we were open to the commercial side of renting to corporations possibly a little earlier. Um, it was always envisaged that it would be self-funding, but... Um, initially, we were set up with some works from a previous collect government collection called the Government Loan Collection. Um, some of those works went to the then, only then new National Gallery in Australia, and the rest of them came to us, plus some seed funding to start the collection. So for about the first 12 years, we did receive money from the government, but since 1992, we'd been entirely self-funding. And the budget from, for acquiring works um, and the budget from rental income has increased exponentially over that time. I think from 1992, we, the, um, the uh, whole budget was... Was about 900,000. Now it's over $3 million we, um, uh, income annually. And we spent last year for the first time over $1 million on contemporary art. Now that's actually quite a big spend in Australia because it's more than any of the other galleries spend on contemporary emerging art. So we're quite a big um, player in the art market and quite a big supporter of the art market in general. Um, the... 
as I said, we have over, um, over 10,000 works and 3,500 artists. Look, at this point, about 70, between 65 and 70 percent of the collection is rented at any one time. So we're really quite successful. About 75 percent is the maximum we can rent because over that, really, we've got nothing to show people. Um, when the economy was booming, as everybody's was a couple of years ago, we were buying very quickly because we needed a lot of work to show people. Um, in the last year, um, as with everybody, there's been a drop-off in business. That's the downside of being self-funded, is we're prey a little bit to the business environment. So we have seen people cutting back their spend. Unfortunately, most people still see art as a luxury. We try and convince them otherwise, but they mostly do see that. So um, businesses particularly have stopped spending quite so much on renting art. Why businesses think it's a very good idea is because we're so flexible. Business, for businesses, particularly who don't want to collect art, we give them a real flexibility and, and a tax deduction. It's tax deductible for businesses to come to us and rent art. And it means they can change it over every year um, if they want to. They can change it if they change offices. They can change it if they change staff. So for businesses, it works very, very well. Um, we uh, have about probably about more than 50% of our clients are now corporate, and so a little less than 50 are government, and a growing band of private um, clients as well uh, for private homes, often for short-term periods, but it's interesting the reason people want to rent art privately. Sometimes they have built a house and have no money left to buy art. Sometimes they want to put a collection together slowly of their own, and in the meantime, they don't want to have empty walls. So there's lots of reasons people would come to us to rent art. Um, one of our biggest successes in the last few years was opening a Melbourne office, of which I have some images here, um, which is a very beautiful showroom space. Um, and that's led to a big increase in our private clients in Melbourne. Um, and you can see lots of interesting work there. Um, so that's been uh, wildly successful beyond our, our expectations. There's a nice picture of a Melbourne tram there for those who are interested. But, um, uh, and we also have, just for reference, we have... Um, a Perth, which I don't know if you know Australia, I should have bought a map, but Perth is a far western city and we have um, works there because one of the big expenses for our clients is transport. Um, Australia is such a big country that transport can be quite an issue. So we do have a, quite a lot of works located in Perth um, so we can service um, the west. Um, we... I said before we're a cultural organisation. What makes us interesting as a business and I think quite successful is that we have... Our objectives of cultural, not financial. Uh, even though we're a business, it's not about the bottom line. It's about supporting artists. So um, in doing that, we buy much more interesting work, and I think that in turn makes the collection more interesting and makes us more successful. So there's something of a paradox going on there, I think, in terms of, of the nature of the collection. The cultural objectives, I think, um, that are important and contribute... Um, to contribute towards our success are um, the fact that we're very national in focus. We buy, I think, between two and 300 works a year now. Um, our average spend is about $5,000. Um, we can spend up to... I mean, we, often, we have spent up to $30,000 since I've been there, but that's a big, a big um, spend for us. We try and spread the money out as widely as we can, and we really try to support young artists. Um, so we're very conscious of it being a national um, collection, and we buy nationally and we try and rent nationally. Um, we, um, we reflect a wide range of tastes. We're a different collection in the sense that we're informed very much by our clients. Um, we have to rent these works out. So um, it doesn't mean we buy what our clients want, but we have our clients in mind. So works for the collection have to be robust because they travel a lot. Um, we kind of know what, what our clients are looking for for their spaces. It doesn't mean we can't buy difficult or interesting artists. I think it just means that we have to work a bit harder to find the right work of those artists when we do buy them. But we manage to usually find a work for most artists that is suitable for, for our rental. I mean, we buy a full range of works. Sometimes we buy works that we know will rent easily that um, aren't perhaps so interesting or difficult. And other times we buy works that are very difficult that we know will have a, little, a bit more trouble renting, but we will rent them in, in, in the end. And, and the easy works support the harder ones. So we, we do have a wide range of, of works, something for everyone and every taste. Um, because we've been going for over for 30 years next year, we do have um, some interesting works from the 80s, as I'll say. Some of them I'm not so, so keen on. Um, but, and we do have a lot of quite traditional works, too, um, from an earlier time. But we don't tend to buy them now. We very much tend to buy contemporary works. One of the things we do support also is not just artists, is the whole art, artist, art gallery system. Because we only buy living artists, living contemporary artists, 
um, because the money has to go to the artist, and we only buy primary market, we don't buy from auction houses, then we are a great supporter of the gallery system, and we're also very conscious of being very fair in where we buy artists from. In Australia, lots of artists will have um, more than one gallery in more than one state, um, because this, the, the arts can be very state-focused in Australia, so we are very conscious of that as well. Um, there's also a very important multiplier effect in the industry because we support framers, conservators, um, all sorts of arts industry professionals with a collection of, of our size. And conservation is a big issue for us because the arts work very hard. Um, the, the, the art objects work very hard. We send them out a lot. Sometimes we get some damage. Sometimes we need to do some repair. But all in all, it's surprising how little damage and repair we have. Uh, we're often... Where the first collection, because of the way we buy, we don't have to get it right. We're very different from, a, from a, an art gallery like, say, the Art Gallery of Taipei or the Art Gallery of Australia, the National Gallery, because we can take more risks. We buy very risky work quite early on because the only criteria is that we, is, is that we have to support the artist and that the work can be rented. We don't have to think long-term about its value. We don't have to think about putting together a national collection. We, we buy in quite a different way, so it makes our collection quite different and quite exciting, and often the first collection that young artists go into. So artists are very keen to become part of our collection because it's the first step on that rung of being accepted in, into, into institutions. Um, having said that, because we buy early, we often are the first to buy new artists, and we often um, uh, get in very early on the ground floor, and then we spend a lot of time loaning works back to other institutions who want to put together shows or want to um, borrow works for show because we end up buying some very interesting things. But there is a certain prestige for new artists in being um, taken into our collection. Um, and the other difference with, between us and, and um, I suppose, state galleries and federal galleries is that we don't put the art on a pedestal. You know, we send it out to you. We buy museum-quality art. We buy the same sort of art that may be in a museum, but we rent it out to you. So you get used to the idea of living with art and having art in the workplace and in the home and, in a sense, demystifying and allowing people to understand the art more and to understand that they can live with works like this around them all of the time. Um, another factor which I'll touch on as we go through the slides is that we do supply all the artworks to the foreign affairs um, uh, department. So all the embassies of Australia all, um, all around the world have art bank works in, in them and that's another way that we do um, promote Australian artists. Um, uh, we're also, we're really, we're all about inclusion, we're about diversity. We buy a great range of works, as you'll see when I go through. We buy sculpture, we buy painting, we buy uh, photography, we buy ceramics, we buy glass, and we buy um, video work as quite recently as I'll touch on as I go through. So um, we cover the whole range of, um, of work. <laughs> 